Central Park is huge. We used to visit New York a lot and we would only see a small part of Central Park. And now that we live here, when we talk to locals, most of them haven't seen much of the park either. But since we're all about local adventures, we wanted to get to know the park better. So today I'm gonna to be sharing some secrets of Central Park with you. Before we get to it, just wanna thank Court for sponsoring this post. They help us make our apartment look great so that we can worry less about our space and explore more. Be sure to check out the blog post below to see our New York City apartment. Okay, are you guys ready? Here goes. This is the Hallett Sanctuary Park. It's tucked right into the busiest part of the park, but feels like you have your own secret corner. Right past the woods over there are hordes of people, but over here you have it all to yourself. The space is open from 10 a.m. until about 30 minutes before sunset. Central Park is all man-made, which is amazing when you think about the scale of this place. But there are a few natural features, like umpire rock, or what some people call rat rock. And you can boulder here. Welcome to the Chess and Checkers house. What's amazing about this spot is all you need is photo ID and you can check out game pieces to play with your friends or you can pick up games with other people. Who wants to play? This one's a cool piece of history. This is the original survey bolt that was hammered in in 1809. The Delacorte clock, which is right near the Central Park Zoo, is a cool feature because it plays one of 44 songs every half hour. This one's a useful tip. Right near Bethesda Terrace and Fountains, there are bathrooms and they're pretty clean. This is Ramble Cave. Criminals used to hide out here. It was a popular spot where kids used to hang out. It's no longer accessible, but you can still climb the stairs down to see where it's bricked off. This is the Swedish Cottage or Pavilion. It was brought over to New York piece by piece in 1877 and is home to the longest continuously running marionette theater. Welcome to the Whisper Bench. I can talk really quietly over here and you can hear me all the way over there. Seneca Village was the first and largest community of free African Americans in New York. Eventually the city took over to build Central Park, but if you look closely you can still find portions of the foundation. Keep your eye out though, it's really easy to miss. All the water in Central Park is drinking water for the city. That's including the lake, the pool, the pond, the Harlem Mirror. And if you're near the pool, you'll find a pipe that is actually the source of water for everything above 96. Did you know that there are waterfalls in Central Park? There are a few throughout the park, but my favorite is this one right at the lock. This is Huddleston Arch. It was built in 1866 and it's held together by just gravity. They're still baffled that it's still standing. We're gonna head to the Block House now, which is the oldest known building in Central Park. It was built as a fortress for the War of 1812 and you don't get too many visitors up here. We're at the site of where Fort Clinton used to be. This cannon has been around since the 1860s and up until 1996, there was a cannonball and gunpowder in it. They finally realized it was there and got rid of it. If you like fishing, stop by the Dana Discovery Center at the Harlem Mirror. You can check out a free fishing pole and bait, but it is only catch and release. If you need to get away from all the noise and the crowds of the city, come to the Conservatory Gardens. There's three sections and it's one of the few quiet zones in the park. I know, so many amazing things in Central Park, right? I think my favorite find was the waterfall. We have a whole list of other things that you can discover in Central Park, so be sure to check out the blog post below. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you guys soon.